disciplinary action after he refused to deal with the Muslim defendant wearing a niqab. Zubia Hussain appeared at Manchester Magistrates Court with her head and body covered. Only her eyes were visible. Ian Murray withdrew from the case after Ms Hussain's lawyer explained to the court that her client observed the, religious, uh, the Muslim religion and so remained covered in public places when men were present. Now, this is already, you'll know, a controversial issue in schools and in workplaces. So, what about the courtrooms? Should defendants be allowed to wear Muslim dress, which makes them unrecognisable? Um, Safras, I'll bring you in on this. First of all, you're not a scholar, but this is all about the interpretation of religious teaching. Was the interpretation in this case right? Is it that strict? Well, I think there's two things about that. One is, is it right to say that she was wearing Muslim dress? And um, I would disagree with that. Um, as you said, I'm not an expert on it, but that, the, the, the way, the, the, that particular form of clothing comes from Saudi Arabia. It doesn't come from Islam itself. And, you, you know, you mentioned uh, the book. When I was growing up in the 80s, people didn't go around wearing hijabs and niqabs, but they were still Muslim. If you look, if you met my mother, or you met my sister, or you met my sister-in-law, none of them wear that, but they're also Muslim. And I think one of the things that happens is that, you know, in terms of trying to work out what to do about this, though, I don't think banning the veil and having those kind of discussions is really all that helpful, because in the end, you've got to ask your question is, why is it that 10 years ago or 20 years ago, people weren't choosing to wear the veil and why are they now and I think that's the only thing mm. but the specific thing about the about the magistrate though I have a problem with that because I mean if I had a problem with somebody wearing garish pink I couldn't sort of say I would refuse to sit next to <laughs> ne next to you you have a hard so, time today oh, yeah. exactly so I don't think that one person could just willy-nilly decide that they're not going to. to sit next to her aren't we this is why this is why it's but obviously done. not enough <laughs> uh, GP this point about uh, public expression of religious belief is this something that is happening more often now or is it simply something that is being reported on more often uh, you've hit it twice there it's happening more and we're getting christians who are now wanting to wear their heads covered and various things like this to be seen to be holy and different and set apart and also it's been reported on more by the press and the press are seizing on this and this is what worries me in the current political climate that we're in that these people might be vilified as being extremists because they wear this garb when really they are religious people carrying on their faith and showing this outward and visible sign of an inward and spiritual grace. I mean, is yes, there, is yes, there an absolute... Can I just say that? Yeah, go I, just say that I, I think that it is extreme though. I mean, how much more extreme do you want to be if you are covered as a woman from, from head to toe? That, that is an extreme it is form. Ex it is yeah. an extreme form. And it, it is it's such the complete antithesis of the way I am. And I, I can't understand... You know, it's not for me. But, yes, but, and that's, but that's your choice. But if that's you feel choice. that your religious belief makes it necessary for you to wear yes. clothing like this, isn't it your right to do so? It is your right to do so, but, there, but, there, but we all have to, to follow other rules in life. I mean, if you're in a court of law, you're in a court of law. Uh, for instance, if you go through passport control, you have to have your face, you know, visible to the officer who, you know. So there are certain rules you, you cannot just blindly follow and dictate, this is what I believe, so therefore this is what, you know, just, that's that, exactly what you were saying. Yeah, that is a good mm. point. I think the other thing to think about is why is it that this particular reading of religion is common and getting more popular? Mm. Do you know what I mean? Why is it that right now people want to create what looks like a visible sense of separation? I think battle lines are being drawn. I think people want to. I think people are angry. People are hurt. People are frustrated, and therefore they are they are they are arming themselves for battle. But of a the kind. worrying thing, Nina. This is my team, and this is what this, you know. The worrying thing for me. I come from a, a very nice seaside town, and we are seeing the BNP rising in popularity amongst what you class as sensible people and covering articles like this will just give them more ammunition. No, but I don't think that's true because I don't think you, you uh, by closing down debate you don't get anywhere. So I think that the, the, what, the, what you need to do is not sort of close the debate down because you worry that the BNP will. What you need to do is show people who might think that somehow all Muslims are represented by the woman we just saw mm -hmm. by showing other examples exactly. of it. So if you see that. women, Absolutely. and there are women out there who are equally Muslim, who are totally successful, who are doing what they're doing, who are also Muslim, and who aren't doing that and they are equally and val as valid Muslims okay. as well. But the media should cover these people as well. Exactly. Get stories out about these people as well. All right, the three of you, thank you very much. Uh, we have some uh, more of uh, your comments as well on uh, this Harry in Manchester by email. I think the magistrate was right to refuse to hear the case. He has a duty to ensure the person in the dock is who they say they are. 